हेलो फ्रेंड दिस इज जुबैर खान एंड यू आर वाचिंग जोराबी नर्सिंग ऑनलाइन क्लासेस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज रेस्पिरेटरी प्रॉब्लम इन एनक्लेक्स आर एन सॉन्डर्स एनक्लेक्स आर एन दिस इज द नाइन्थ एडिशन ऑफ द सॉन्डर्स एनक्लेक्स आर एन सो दिस इज द न्यू चैप्टर रेस्पिरेटरी प्रॉब्लम वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट सो लेट अस स्टार्ट द चैप्टर सो हेयर दिस इज इट्स प्रायोरी Priority concepts are gas, action, and perfusion. Okay, so here we will see the anatomy and physiology. So, what is the primary function of respiratory system? The main primary function of the respiratory system is it provides the oxygen. It provides the oxygen for metabolism in the tissues. And second function is remove the carbon dioxide and waste product of the metabolism. So it provides the O2 and remove the CO2. Okay, remove the CO2. So what are the secondary functions of the respiratory system? So there are five main five secondary functions of respiratory system. Five main secondary functions. So one one is facilitate the sense of smell. It produces the speech. Maintain acid base balance. Maintain body water levels. and maintains heat balance so it helps for smell okay through nose you will you can smell it and it helps for producing speeches speech for speech also it helps and the main point is maintain acid base balance you would have heard the respiratory alkalosis and respiratory acidosis so that is acid base balance this we will study in the nursing foundation maintain the body water level like vapors it, it will remove the water by the in the vapor form so it will maintain the body water levels also and it will maintain the heat balance in the body okay so next thing is upper respiratory airways so what are the upper respiratory airways there are two respiratory airways we will divide the respiratory airways one is upper upper one another one is lower one so upper we will say na upper respiratory tract another one is lrt one is urt another one is lrt urt means upper respiratory tract lower one is second one is lower respiratory tract so what are the components of upper respiratory tract is nose what nose will do it will humidifies warms and filter the inspired air whatever whatever we are going to inspire it will be filtered by the nose second option is second point is sinuses so nose then sinuses what is the sinuses will do it will the air fill the cavity within the hollow bones that surround the nasal passages provide resonance during speeches okay so it provide the resonance when we speak it provide the resonance during speech okay so it is a air filled cavity cavity within the hollow bone surrounded by the nasal surrounded the nasal passages okay next one is pharynx so pharynx is passes of passes for respiratory and digestive tract located behind the oral and nasal cavity this is the passage way for the respiratory and digestive tracts okay this is the passage way for the respiratory and digestive tracts located behind the oral and nasal cavities next one is divided into nasopharynx pharynx will be divided into three types this is the it will be divided into three one is nasopharynx another one is oropharynx and one more is laryngopharynx okay so pharynx will be connected with the nasal passages so we are saying nasopharynx it will be connected with the oral cavity so we are saying oral cavity so we are saying oral pharynx oropharynx and it will be connected with the larynx also so we are saying it is laryngopharynx so there are three three types one is nasopharynx another one is oropharynx another one is laryngopharynx okay 
so next point is larynx so we will see the larynx what is larynx larynx is located just below the pharynx at the root of the tongue so it is located behind the pharynx below the pharynx at the root of the tongue so this is the root of the tongue here it will be present what is that that is the larynx so commonly called it is a voice box so we we call it is voice box it contains two pair of vocal cords one is false vocal cord another one is true vocal cord so larynx is a larynx what we call we call is a voice box and contains two vocal cords one is true and one is false vocal cord okay next thing the opening between the true vocal cord is a glottis okay so this is the main important point when opening between the true vocal cords so when the opening between the true vocal cord is called glottis okay it is called glottis the glottis plays a important plays an important role is coughing so for coughing who will play the important role it glottis will play the important role so for coughing who will play the important role glottis will play the important role for coughing which is the most fundamental defense mechanism of lung so very important point it is a very very important point so coughing is a most fundamental defense mechanism of the lung whenever something will go inside the lung we will cough we will defense against that thing whatever foreign particle will enter into the lung whatever is going inside the lungs so we will cough so cough so who will play important role in coughing that is a glottis so glottis will important will play the important role in cough okay cough or oh, cough what is cough coughing cough is a defense mechanism of the lungs okay so next point is we will see the epiglottis so next point is epiglottis so what is epiglottis epiglottis is a leaf shaped elastic flap structure at the top of the larynx like this is the larynx okay in here it's a flap like structure will be there so that is the epiglottis it prevents the food it prevents the food entry into the food sorry wind pipe okay so it prevents the entry of the food into the trachea into the trachea okay it has written prevent food from entering the tracheobronchial tree by closing over the glottis going over the glottis during the swallowing when we swallow it will cover the glottis okay so this is the glottis it will cover by the epi glottis so that's why we are saying epi means above above anything above uh, is there that we used to say epi so it is the above the glottis so that's why we are saying epi glottis so it helps to the prevent the food from the entering to the tracheobronchial tree by closing prevent the food from entering the tracheobronchial tree by closing over the glottis during swallowing okay the next point next point we will see the this is that was the upper respiratory tract this is the lower respiratory tract or airway so this is the lower respiratory tract or airway so lower respiratory tract contains trachea okay so trachea is trachea located in front of the eso fagus so this is the esophagus and this will be the trachea okay so esophagus will be the behind and trachea will be the 
like here okay in front of the esophagus okay so what is trachea trachea located in front of the esophagus branches into the right and left main stem bronchia bronchi at the carina okay so main stem bronchi so main stem bronchi begins begin at the carina so carina is like this is the carina part okay the right bronchus this is the right bronchus this is the left bronchus the right bronchus is slightly wider it will be the slightly wider and shorter and more vertical than the left bronchus it will be the more vertical okay divided into secondary or lobular bronchi so it will be divided into the secondary or lobular lobar bronchi that enter each of five lobes of the lung so it will enter into the lungs five lung five lobes of the lungs so divided into the secondary or lobar bronchi so there will be the primary bronchi then here will be the secondary bronchi so it will be divided into the secondary bronchi like this is the lungs so here the primary bronchi here it comes like this is the secondary bronchi okay so secondary bronchi or lobar bronchi okay so next point is the bronchi are lined with cilia so this is the main important point very very important point lobar the bronchi this is the bronchi bronchi is lined with the cilia these are the ciliated epithelium will be there which pro propel mucus up away from the lower respiratory tract to the trachea where it can be expectorated or swallowed so there will be the mucus uh, cilia will be present in, into the bronchi okay so bronchi will have the cilia so that's why we can propel up the mucus so it will it prevent it prevents the another foreign particle to go inside the trachea also so that's why cough will come and this ciliated epithelium cilia will be there like cilia it will propel mucus up okay it will throw out the mucus okay and away from the lower respiratory tract lower res lower respiratory away from the lower airway to trachea so it will go into the trachea where it can be expectorated or swallowed so it can go out or it can go into the food pipe another point is bronchioles another point is bronchioles okay so in bronchioles so what are the thing bronchial branch from the secondary bronchi and subdivided into a small terminal respiratory bronchioles so bronchioles are branch from the secondary bronchi it is the branch of the secondary bronchi subdivided into a small terminal and respiratory bronchioles so bronchi will be bronchi like this is the bronchi this will be divided into the like bronchioles so this is the bronchioles okay contain no cartilage and depend on the elastic recoil of the lung for patency so it doesn't have any cartilage okay so bronchioles does not have any cartilage it depends on the elastic recoil they will be the like elastic recoiling for the lung patency the terminal bronchioles contain no cilia so this is the bron terminal bronchiole okay terminal bronchiole does not have any cilia and do not participate in the gaseous exchange this terminal bronchiole will not part participate in the gaseous exchange okay another point is alveolar duct or alveoli so alveolar duct or alveoli so alveoli is 
Acinus pleural acini is a term used to indicate all the structure distal to terminal bronchiole. Okay, from <coughs> distal to terminal bronchiole, we used to call acinus or pleural acini. Okay, branches from the respiratory bronchioles. So this is the alveoli or what is alveoli? It is the branches from the respiratory bronchioles. It is a branch of the respiratory bronchioles. Okay. Alveolar sac, like this is the al uh, bronchioles. In this, a small a small sacs will be there. That is we used to call alveolar sac, which arise from the ducts and contain cluster of alveoli, which are the basic unit of gas exchange. So this is the alveolar sac. In that, a small the smallest unit unit of the uh, alveolar sac is alveoli. Alveoli. Here the gas action will occur. Okay, so this is also an important question. Where gas action will occur? It will occur into the alveoli. So there are type two alveolar cell is also present in the wall of the alveolar. Alveoli secrete such surfactants. So there are type one alveoli and there are two type two alveoli. Okay, so type two alveoli will secrete the surfactant. It will secrete the surfactant. Surfactant, a phospholipid protein that reduces the surface tension. So, what is surfactant? Surfactant is a phospholipid protein that reduces the surface tension in the alveoli. Without surfactant, alveoli would collapse. If surfactant will is not present. Alveoli will be collapsed, so it helps. Surfactant will help to reduce the surface tension. If surfactant is not available, alveoli will be collapsed. Okay. Now final points are final point is lungs. So lungs are lungs. Located into the pleural cavity in the thorax. So lungs is located into the pleural cavity of in the thorax. It extends from just above the clavicle to the diaphragm. So it is present from this is like this is clavicle, clavicle to this is like this is diaphragm. So it will be present like here from clavicle to diaphragm the major muscle of inspiration so diaphragm is a major muscle of inspiration it helps into the inspiration okay next point is the right lung which is larger than the left okay so right lung will be larger than the left lung okay and into divided into three lobes. So light right lungs will be divided into three lobes. Okay. So this is the right lung, the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and the lower lobe. So upper lobe, this is the middle lobe, and this is the lower lobe. So right lung is a larger than the left lung and it will be divided into two three lobes upper middle and lower the left lung which is narrower than the right lung so it is a narrower than the right lung and it will be divided into two lobes so it will be divided into two lobes okay It will be divided into two lobes. This is the upper lobe and this is the lower lobe. The respiratory structures are innervated by phrenic nerve. Okay. And the vagus nerve and the thoracic nerve. So what are the nerves supply for the respiratory structure? One is phrenic nerve. Another one is vagus nerve. Another one is thoracic nerve. Nerve. Okay, so PVT, phrenic nerve, vagus nerve, 
and thoracic nerve so there are nerve supply is three nerves supplied for the respiratory structure phrenic nerve vagus nerve and thoracic nerve next point is parietal pleura line inside of the thoracic cavity okay so there will be a pleura okay pleural parietal pleura so two types of pleura is there one is parietal pleura another one is visceral visceral pleura okay parietal pleura lines the inside of the thoracic cavity like this is the thoracic cage inside is it will be it is a parietal pleura and visceral pleura covers the pulmonary faces so these are the lungs so lungs so covering of the lungs with the visceral pleura and after visceral pleura there will be parietal pleura it will be connected with the thoracic cage okay so attached with the thoracic cage means parietal pleura and lungs attached with the, the visceral pleura pulmonary surfaces a thin fluid layer a thin fluid layer which is produced by the cells of the pleura lubricates the visceral pleura and parietal pleura allowing them to glide smoothly and painlessly during respiration so there is a like this is the pleura this is the parietal pleura this is the visceral pleura in that some pleural fluid will be there some lubrication will be there so it allows them to glide smoothly so it will be glide over each other and it will prevent the any injury like someone hit here so it helps to give the backward direction force so it it won't be hurt to the lungs or or any thoracic visceral organs okay next one is blood flows throughout the lungs via pulmonary circulation circulation like pulmonary artery or pulmonary veins so it, the blood flow it goes the blood flow <coughs> provided by the pulmonary circulation okay so lungs will take the pulmonary artery will go to the lungs okay it will take a what type of it will be the deoxygenated blood okay so like this is the lungs and this is the heart so here pulmonary artery will take the blood that is deoxygenated blood to the lungs and here pulmonary veins veins will take oxygenated blood into the heart okay then heart will send all the oxygenated blood into the systematic circulation by aorta okay next point is accessory muscles of the respiration so what are the accessory muscles of respiration that is includes is sclenial scleny muscles which elevate the first two ribs okay so scleny muscles present in the first two ribs it helps it elevate the first two ribs the sternocleidomastoid muscle these all have, everyone knows it's in the neck okay which raises the sternum and trapezius and pectoralis muscle which fix the shoulder so there are the what are the muscles are there accessory muscles one is sclenic muscle s c a l e n sclenic muscle sternocleidomastoid muscle okay trapezius and pectoralis muscle okay pectoralis trapezius sternocleidomastoid and sclenic muscle okay so these are the accessory muscles for the respiration next the respiratory process how respiration occurs so diaphragm descends into the abdominal cavity during inspiration 
when we inspire a diaphragm will it will be the usually diaphragm is like this so it will go down in inspiration when we expire the diaphragm will go upward direction okay so it has written here cause causing negative pressure in in the lungs okay so it will go down but it will provide the negative pressure okay the negative pressure draws air from the area of the greater pressure in the atmosphere into the area of the lesser pressure of into the area of the of lesser pressure the lungs what it means the negative pressure draws air the negative pressure draws air from the area of the greater pressure from the greater pressure air will go to the negative pressure lower pressure in the area okay so atmosphere the atmosphere into the area of the lesser pressures the lungs okay in the lungs air passes through the terminal bronchioles into the alveoli so in the lungs air passes through the terminal bronchioles and diffuse into the surrounding capillaries then travel to the rest of the body to oxygenate blood tissues that i told no in the lungs air passes through terminal bronchioles from the terminal bronchioles it will go to the alveoli and from the alveoli it will go to the capillaries in capillaries means in with the pulmonary artery then it will sorry pulmonary vein then it will go to the heart then it will be divided into the all the whole body system next one is at the end of inspiration the diaphragm and the internal costal muscle relax so when inspiration ends so diaphragm will come into the rest intercostal muscle also it will take rest and lungs recoil okay then lungs will recoil lungs will come in the, in their original shapes okay as lungs recoil pressure within the lungs become higher than the atmospheric pressure when lungs come their original position original position okay that time pressure will be increased into the lung whereas outside the lung pressure will be decreased higher than the atmospheric pressure causing the air which now contains the cellular waste products carbon dioxide so here carbon dioxide will be the waste it will be excreted out and water move from the alveoli into the in the lungs to the atmosphere so it will throw out of the lungs so oxygen will be gained and co2 will be thrown out okay next point is effective gas exchange so what is the effective gas exchange effective gas exchange depends on the distribution of gas ventilation blood perfusion in all portion of the lungs so effective gas exchange depend on the distribution of gas okay like we took the air so air air contains o2 co2 other but we need o2 so we will take the o2 and we will remove the co2 so this is called ventilation gaseous action and will this o2 will give give to the blood so this is called blood perfusion in the all the portion of the lungs so we'll get the o2 it will be it will mix in the blood and blood will take to whole body okay so there will be the cellular in each cell will be there so there cellular respiration will occur okay so these are the anatomy and physiology now we will see the main thing diagnostic tests so what are the diagnostic tests in the respiratory chapter so 
here one point is written this factor for respiratory disorders so we'll see the what are the respiratory uh, what are the risk factor for respiratory disorder we'll see so diagnostic test uh, diagnostic diagnostic tests are chest x-ray film so we want some chest x-ray we can do chest x-ray hrct thorax and what else we can do c c t thorax okay, these are the diagnostic test okay provide information regarding the anatomical location appearance of the lungs okay so what we want to see we want to see the how lungs are functioning what is the appearance of the lungs so in in this we will get the diagnosis this is we will this we will get done by the x-ray or hrct or cct thorax like we are going to do procedure x-ray or anything else so what we will do we will remove the all the joints other metal objects from the chest area so we should be have a clear vision of the chest okay if we if a patient has wearing some jewelry and all so jewelry will also come into the it will hinder the that area we cannot see clearly so we should remove the all the jewelry of the patient then only we should take the chest x-ray so next point is assess the client's ability to inhale and hold their breath so when they can hold the breath they can how they can inhale this we need to assess and after post procedure no special care is required after the procedure unless there are abnormal findings so post procedure there is no special care required until uh, unless there is abnormal findings are there okay so this is the very important when we are going to ask a patient for chest x-ray if female patient is there so if female patient is there we should confirm about the pregnancy question the client regarding pregnancy or the possibility of the pregnancy before performing radiographic studies so we have seen if if uh, <coughs> female patient is there we need to ask the about the pregnancy or we can do the upt urine pregnancy test okay so what are the risk factor of the respiratory disorders so the main risk factor for respiratory disorders are these in the box so this is very important so first one is chest injury if any chest injury is occurring so we can go in the some blood collection will be there okay hemothorax pneumothorax and shortness of breath will be there difficulty in breathing what all things will come in that pneumonia okay so chest injury crowded living condition so people live in the crowded living condition then also it is also a living uh, risk factor for the respiratory disorder and environmental allergies okay so this is also a risk factor and exposure to chemicals like some people are working in the factories okay so there are chemicals and environmental pollutants so this is also a risk factor and or else patient or client have any family history of infectious disease like tb or pneumonia or pneumonia any other thing okay any history of the tb and all no influenza so family history is there so infectious disease client also get this respiratory disorder so this is also a risk factor frequent respiratory illness geographical residence and traveling to foreign countries smoking so this is also a risk factor also and it can we can say it is cause also so when we smoke so we will get the respiratory problem like copd and all surgery if we are if patient is going under any surgery so there also risk for respiratory arrest and respiratory failure and all okay respiratory problems use of chewing tobacco 
skin tobacco is also a risk factor or any viral syndrome okay or any viral disease or syndrome so these are the risk factors for chest disease or respiratory disease next we will see the diagnostic test is sputum space female how we will collect the sputum what is the need of sputum collection okay so we will see here sputum specimen the specimen obtained by expectorant or tracheal suctioning so sputum we can like patient can expectorant expectorant and or tracheal suction we can get the sputum specimen in assisting the identification organism or abnormal cells okay so we will see in the sputum culture we would have seen like we are doctor ask for sputum culture and sensitivity okay so we we can take by the tracheal suction if patient is having trachea or endotracheal tube we can get the et endotracheal tube or tracheal tube okay so we can get is by the suction or patient can itself expectorate okay second one is this sputum for culture and sensitivity should be collected before entry microbial therapy so any culture and sensitivity we are going to assess so it should be collected before the before any antibiotics like whatever tt culture or blood culture we should not start the antibiotic before after before collection okay after collection only we should start the antibiotic antibiotic antimicrobial therapy initiated unless the test is being performed to evaluate the effectiveness of medication already being given okay pre procedure so before procedure what we need to do pre procedure determine the specific purpose of collection determine the specific purpose of collection okay determine the specific purpose of the collection check institutional policy for the appropriate method of collection so there is different different policies in the different hospitals or institution obtain an early obtain an early morning sterile specimen so for sputum culture or sensitivity we need to take the sputum sample in the morning early morning okay by suctioning or expectoration after a respiratory treatment if a treatment is prescribed give the client the specimen cup the night before okay so before night we will give to the client ask him to expectorate expectorant in the container okay instruct the client to rinse the mouth with water before collection to decrease contamination of sputum sample from particles in ortho in oro pharynx so we should instruct the client rinse the mouth okay so this is a very important point here so we can give the point to do the mcq so they they can ask what is your responsibility you will ask to the patient to rinse the mouth before collection of uh, sputum or you will not ask to the client rinse the mouth like that we can they can ask in the two three options so there is a obtain 15 ml of sputum so there is this is the container so 15 ml of at least 15 ml of sputum should be collected how much 15 ml so 15 ml of sputum should be collected <coughs> instruct the client to take several deep breaths so we should instruct the client we should take several breath deep breath then cough deeply to obtain sputum so he should take deep breath okay and cough deeply to obtain the sputum 
remind the client that sputum comes from the lungs okay we should tell the client that sputum will come from the lungs and the saliva is not sputum so this is very important okay and saliva is not sputum so this we tell we should tell the client saliva is not a sputum it should come from the lung so he should take a deep breath he should we should ask take a deep several deep breaths then cough deeply so it should come from the lungs next one is collect the specimen before the client begins antibiotic therapy this i have already told you should collect a specimen before starting a antibiotic therapy if already started if already started then what we need to do ensure the laboratory can utilize the anti microbial removal device when analyzing the specimen okay if an if antibiotic therapy is already been he started so we need to ask the laboratory members can utilize the antimicrobial removal device so they can use the antimicrobial removal device when analyzing the specimen okay now post procedure so what we will do in the post procedure post procedure if culture of sputum is prescribed transport the level of specimen to the laboratory immediately so we should Im immediately transport to the laboratory indicate whether the client was currently on antimicrobial therapy at the time of collection and we should write what are the antibiotics is going on to the client we should write on it and we should uh, transport as early as possible okay assist the client with mouth care and we should provide the mouth care to the patient we should assist the client for mouth care and this is the very important point this is the very important ensure that informed consent was obtained for any invasive procedure if we are going to do any invasive procedure we should get we inform consent we should ensure it's not our work to take the consent okay it's a hcp healthcare professional or doctor's work to get the informed consent okay we should ensure whether consent has been taken before any procedure okay vital signs are measured before the procedure and monitor post procedure whatever procedure we are going to do we should check the vital signs and after procedure also we should check the vital signs to detect the signs of complications so we will detect the signs of complications okay so any complication may occur after the procedure okay like we are doing tracheostomy okay tracheostomy they are doing so after tracheostomy we should assess assess the vital signs like bp if bp is falling that means there is a loss of loss of blood so patient is going for hypotension patient is going in hypotension okay or any tachycardia is there so this we, we need to check it now another thing is another diagnostic procedure is laryngo or bronchoscopy so this is also a diagnostic test laryngoscopy and bronchoscopy so it is a direct visualization of the larynx trachea bronchi with a fiber optic bronchoscope so they will directly see the bronchi trachea or larynx with a bronchoscope so pre procedure what we need to do maintain the npo nothing by mouth nail per oral status as prescribed so we should keep the patient on npo assess the result of coagulation so pt inr pt and inr value we should get it 
okay remove dentures and eye glasses so whatever eye glasses is there dentures is there we need, we need to remove it and instruct the client to perform good mouth care to prevent bacteria from entering into the lungs from the oropharynx so we should ask the client to perform oral hygiene so oral hygiene is important before any bronchoscopy or laryngoscopy and establish an intravenous access as necessary okay so IV line should be patent administer medication for sedation if prescribed so whatever medication is prescribed for sedation we should administer a local anesthetic spray may be used Local anesthesia spray can be used and instruct the client not to swallow the spray and to expect to rate any excess into the basin. So it should not be swallow and whatever expectorate is coming it should be discarded into the basin. Expectorate any excess into the into a basin. Okay. Have emergency resuscitation supplied supplies readily available. So we should keep the emergency resuscitation. We should keep the crash cart behind this beside the patient and suction everything should be available. So post procedure post procedure we should provide the client semi folus position. So this is important. So after bronchoscopy, we should provide the patient semi -folus. Assess the return of gag reflex. So we are giving the local uh, like mouth <coughs> lignocaine like anesthesia, no? local anesthesia spray. So it will stop the gag reflex. So we should assess for return of gag reflex. And maintain NP status until gag reflex returns. Okay, till that we need to maintain the NPO status. We don't maintain patient may aspirate. Okay, we, we give the any liquid diet or anything patient will patient can aspirate the things. Okay, monitor the bloody sputum. We should monitor the bloody sputum. Any blood is coming or not. Monitor respiratory status particularly if sedation has been administered so any sedation we have given so we need to monitor the respiratory status monitor for complications such as bronchospasm so bronchospasm this is the main important point okay. so this is the main important point so when patient is going for the bronchoscopy so there is a main complication is bronchospasm. So this is the main. This is the main complication. Bronchospasm or bronchial perforation. Indicate the facial. Indicate the facial or neck cryptus. Dysarrhythmias, hemorrhage hypoxemia or pneumothorax okay so pneumothorax can occur pneumothorax can occur so main complication is bronchospasm or bronchial perforation which indicates by the facial and neck cryptus dysarrhythmia hemorrhage hypoxemia and pneumothorax so what we need to do, we should notify the PSC, primary health care provider. If sign of complications, agar, any sign, agar, we should inform the SCP, health care provider. Inform the client that warm saline gargle and lozenges may be helpful for sore throats. Okay, so we should inform the client like saline gargle he can do, he or she can do. 
biofear culture result available in 2 to 7 days so we know whenever we are sending the cultures or biopsy it will take 2 to 7 days okay now next is endobronchial endobronchial ultrasound ebus so here what we will do tissue samples are obtained from the central lung masses and lymph nodes using bronchoscope with the help of ultrasound guidance so with the help of USG machines we will do the endo bronchoscopy we will take the tissues or sample okay from the central lung okay and lymph nodes so we will study in about the the tissues or lymph node okay the next point is tissue samples are used for diagnosis and staging lung cancer for lung cancer for the tissue sample whatever biopsy we have taken we will take is for diagnosing the lung cancer and dissection detecting infections and identifying inflammatory diseases that affect the lungs such as sarcoidosis such as sarcoidosis post procedure what we need to do the client is monitored for signs of bleeding and respiratory distress okay respiratory distress so for today this is enough we will see next in next video we will see the pulmonary angiography thank you all of you please subscribe my channel this is joravi nursing online classes and this is Jor this is zubair khan okay so in next video we will start from the pulmonary angiography i hope this video will be helpful for you people okay we will meet in another class thank you